Security in Linux. Generally, when I bring this up, it's about positivity. It's about Linux is a secure operating system. Obviously more secure than Mac or Windows. But here lately, we've seen a lot of news that kind of brings that into question. If you just look up Linux news and you start scrolling through it, you see nasty Linux net filter firewall security hole found. Then you can scroll down some more. New Linux backdoor that propagates via log4j. Then you go down a little further. NAS vendor says several of its products likely contain Linux dirty pipe flaw. And over the last 90 days, if you're honest with yourself, we have seen quite a few of these articles that cover security breaches in the Linux operating system. Well, when you really think about it, it's not necessarily the operating system. It goes down to the Linux kernel in and of itself. Now, having said that, I have covered a couple of different Linux operating systems and used the word immutable. And I've had people in the comments say, exactly what is immutable? Well, that's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. If you zip on over and check it out, we have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve tees, hats, phone cases, stickers, mugs, water bottles, steel tumblers, and we have more coming and we have new products coming. And if you go over to the store, you'll see that we have things based on Arch, Got Linux, which is Debian based, eBuzz Central merch, and then we have our I use Arch by the way, and then we have our sudo apt git install a life. And if you scroll down some more, we have our base Linux merch with just Linux and the penguin. Then we have our Kali inspired merchandise. I really love the dragon look. And obviously one of my favorites. It's okay if you don't like Linux. Not everyone has good taste. Then we have our Linux Mint inspired, our Ubuntu inspired, some more Arch. Manjaro, I love the green on the black. We do have our hats, our phone cases. We also have Fedora merch. We have approximately four to five new products coming next week. So keep your eye out on that. But like I said, zip on over, check the store out. If you see something you like, pick it up. And if there's something you'd like to see on the store, please let us know in the comments below. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to exit out of this. And we're going to zip on over and take a look at something. Now, if you look up the word immutable, basically what immutable means is not subject or susceptible to change, which means it can't be changed. It's locked down. Now, with a Linux distribution that is immutable, this has its pros and cons. The distro that we're going to be looking at today is Fedora Silverblue. And basically what it is, is an immutable operating system. It's constant. It doesn't change. There is not a variable in the system. You download and install applications and containers using Flatpak rather than putting it into the root file system. This means not only that the installation of applications is isolated from the core file system, but also that ability for malicious applications to compromise your system is significantly reduced. It's impossible. We generally try to avoid the word impossible when describing attacks or vulnerabilities in security, but the risk is significantly low. Now the container immutability, we're not gonna describe containers or Linux containers or Docker containers in detail. Basically collections of softwares that create images and run workloads on a host server, sometimes you would call them pods. That keeps them away from the operating system. They do not go into the root file system, which means if you do anything to change that application, it does not change your operating system. Now, in Silverblue, you actually have what's called double immutability. Silverblue runs applications and containers. This fact means that you have two levels of security provided as default when you run applications on the Silverblue system. The operating system's immutability and the container's immutability. Now, if we scroll back up top, you have applications that are actually run out of containers or pods or whatever you might want to call them. But you also have an operating system that is mounted as read only, meaning that it's immutable. You can't change it. Now Fedora Silverblue became official variant in October 30th of 2018. You've got two ways to put applications on it. You can use flat packs or you can use the RPM OS tree. Now the difference is the RPNs are going to be installed as OS extensions, like fonts, utilities, and printer support. But once you install that package, because the file system is immutable, 
you must reboot into a new image created to use the package. This doesn't occur with flat packs. It only occurs when you use things from the RPM OS tree. But the operating system in and of itself is not changed and you have to open in a separate new image. So what we're taking a look at today is Fedora Silverblue. It's the newest release of the operating system. It comes with GNOME 41. It has improved Wayland and GTK4. Support for power modes such as Balanced Performance and Power Saver. It's got an improved GNOME software app. It comes with Wire Plumber, which is an improved session manager for Pipewire. The ability to install some Flathub apps after enabling third-party repositories using what's called a filtered Flathub view. New Fedora edition Fedora Kianoti which is basically Fedora Silverblue with the Plasma desktop instead of GNOME. It's got the GNU toolchain update, which is GCC 11, Glibc 2.34, Bind Utils 2.37, and GDB 10.2. And you can find more details and exciting improvements in Fedora 35 Silverblue over at this website. I will include all the links below in the description, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and zip on over to the Silverblue desktop. Now we are at Fedora Silverblue's desktop. Now I do want to point something out. If you do download this operating system, you will have to install it. I haven't been able to get it to run in live mode. You can install it into a virtual machine. It doesn't take much space and it gives you the opportunity to kind of actually take a look at it, run around in the operating system a little bit and just kind of see what they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, here is what you get. You get Fedora, a familiar desktop. You get an operating system that is immutable. It is read-only. Nothing can write to it. And everything that runs inside of it runs from an app image. I'm not going to go through everything and show you everything that there is in GNOME or in Fedora because everybody is quite familiar with that. I'm just letting you know this is an operating system that is completely secure. It's immutable. It's read-only. The application app images are read-only, and you can't make many changes to it. So what advantages does that give to you as a Linux user? If you're really, really concerned with security, Fedora Silverblue is something you definitely want to take a look at. If you're somebody that has had issues in the past with maybe firewall breaches, Fedora Silverblue is definitely something to look at. And if you're just somebody right now that thinks that people are going to start making malware specifically for Linux and you want to make sure you protect your system, Fedora Silverblue is something to take a look at. I have actually installed this operating system. I put it on an old HP Stream laptop I have, and it's running beautifully. Of course, the HP Stream is very low spec, and with the GNOME desktop being a little heavier like your KDE Plasma, but it is completely secure, and I use it on a daily basis. So I truly recommend zip on over to Fedora Silverblue's website. I'll make sure to include that link in the description below. Download it, install it in a virtual machine, and kind of take a look around. Is this the future of secure operating systems in Linux? I don't have any idea if it is or not. I want your feedback. What do you think about Fedora Silverblue? Are they going in the right direction? Or is it going to be too closed off for most Linux users? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to zip on over to the eBuzz Central store. If there's something you'd like to see that's not on the store, drop that in the comments below and we'll do our best to get it there. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.